What's up? Today I'm going to be removing the uh, exhaust manifold um, from both banks on this uh, Mitsubishi V6. Um, so we'll just get to it. go the O2 sensor has been taken out that's done next we have to remove the exhaust manifold um, it was about a 15 minute video so I put it at four times the speed Okay, so we're accounting for all the bolts now. There is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven holes. And we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bolts in order. So that'll work, and that's the bolt scheme. So that's how I took them out, and I put them in order like this. This is the first exhaust manifold off the front of the engine. And uh, you can see that a little bit of dirt got in, so I'm going to have to uh, clean it up myself. I'll probably vacuum it out and make sure nothing went into the catalytic converter. Um, and I will replace the uh, O2 sensor that goes in this hole.
old uh, exhaust manifold gasket. Um, as you can see, it's pretty, pretty dirty. Um, where it bolted to, it's obvious that there is quite a lot of uh, oil sludge leaking out, uh, venting, if you will, oil venting, whatever you want to call it. But um, it doesn't look all that good. But of course, you know that this motor has a massive knock in it. So that's why it's being replaced. Um, but look at all that grime there. I thought it would be nice to show you guys how it looks. <clears throat> we'll just put this thing in storage. I'm not probably going to th end up throwing it away, but it's important that we keep all the parts in order until we have everything we need. I have no idea if you guys, um, you know, like this sort of thing. Um, but my goal is to try to be as helpful as possible. You never know this engine. Uh, you may have one, you may have questions. I don't know about you, but I feel it's very difficult to find um, useful information online. Uh, there are several build forms, but like it's hard to separate all the chatter from like say if a guy is going to put the build up So better for you to see it in real time Now the car is raised up to acceptable level, so that's good. This is the piece we're removing next, the exhaust, uh, I guess the support first, it's disconnected on the back there, you see already, um, it's difficult eh, because there's no room from this angle to get access to the rear bolts that hang the other manifold in order to get it, we have to get 
And maybe I spoke too soon. Hey, I could take those off in there. That manifold there. Yes, those two bolts maybe. Hopefully, I can disconnect it. <laughs> That's already off. That is not off yet. So now we change this uh, bolt here up top will have to be removed and this bolt up here will have to be removed that's next over here i thought i'd give you a shot of the undercarriage when i bought this thing the guy that sold it to me cut out the catalytic converter on the back fortunately he left the catalytic converters up front which was nice as you can see the body is in fairly good condition it's little to no rust the subframe is much cleaner than mine and uh, I have no idea if you guys can see that no I guess not got stuck. There it goes. Almost rounded off the edges. Yeah, that would have been a big disaster if I had actually done that. Then good luck fixing the engine. <laughs> Alright, let's get back to it. Sorry about that. That one I need is the one propping up the camera. <laughs> oh no, I thought it broke. Oh shit. Okay, it's okay. As long as the other one doesn't break. <sighs>
I think it'll be better to use heat. I can't tell you how important and invaluable this tool has been for literally everything. Any bowl. All you have to do is heat it up for a few minutes. After you're done, it comes out like butter. Let's see how that does. Hopefully that was enough heat. If not, heat it again or we'll break it. Where's my... Oh, I'm looking for something. <laughs> I tell you. We don't want to break bolts. more gentle and there it is guys this is one of the major components that are in the way it doesn't solve all of our problems but it at least gets me one step closer to another problem to solve show you what is my problem nicely um, this part is part of the exhaust manifold it's just a shielding of course I hope you can understand what I mean I'm pointing to this part right here and as long as that's in place I can't take down the engine because as soon as I do it'll catch and it'll hold right here well on top of the I guess the steering assembly and it'll crimp it and it'll most likely break it so there's no way to go about it like that I don't see any room to remove the manifold on this side so that leaves me with a couple of options number one I'm gonna to have to abandon my idea about how it's going to take it out in the first place because if I do that I'll break it so that's an abandoned plan 
and uh, now I may have to buy an engine hoist just so that I can balance it properly and move it because there's no way to lower it down the only way this engine can go is down you see when you take this engine out it has to go down because of the bracket that's on that holds the transmission mount on the driver's side that's only one direction you can go and you can see that even if I lower it an inch that's already enough to get it to crimp under here so this entire this entire assembly will have to be removed somehow so I'm going to take a look from the top and see if I can access those bolts I hope I can otherwise it's going to be a disaster and I probably will have to remove that as well that bolt up there that you can kind of see it this assembly probably could stay in place I hope uh, when it comes down it's not going to break but I can see now that if I do it the way I was planning then the engine hoist that I'm using is not acceptable for the job I have to buy a hoist or rather a cherry picker you know what I mean just uh, something to lift the motor up and perhaps balance it while I try and find a way to move it forward. If I can't succeed in taking out them bolts, then I'm in big trouble. Big trouble. It's no problem, I guess, when you put it in, eh? Because then you can see where you're going at least and you can kind of hold the engine so that it goes more or less in line. But now that I'm looking at it, it looks like that Mitsubishi made a flaw here. And the only way to remove it is if you lay beneath the subframe and get a long wrench and hope that that's long enough to reach to the end. Oh, that's nuts. Anyway, let's go. We'll give her a little bit of heat first. I feel like this is not the optimal view, but anyway, I can't put you beneath me because then you'll be in my way. Okay, that's the right one. Let's get the torch. <sighs> So all it takes is heating them up five minutes and you can get it to move no matter how corroded or rusted it is. For years my dad has been teaching me to use like a super penetrant WD-40 uh, gunk remover but nothing in my experience works as well as heat. That's why this machine <laughs> is the most valuable tool that I've got and I've broken so many nuts because it's like over torqued and rusted and uh, you know I wish I had known this trick about 10 years ago because it would save me a lot of breaking of bolts and heartache and re-drilling and re-tapping it's just absolute nonsense but there you go, you can see it. The bolt is heating up. Five minutes. Five minutes you can have it, typically. If it doesn't work like easy, give it more heat. Go to 10 minutes if necessary. It's just, it's all about if you can feel it move, 
and it moves easy, that's what you want. You never, in, in as a mechanic, you never want to fight anything. Fighting means you're doing something wrong. It should be gentle, it should be easy, it should be relatively peaceful, you know what I mean? I know it doesn't make any sense, but really, as a mechanic, you cannot break anything. You have to be patient with the car, and this is what saves trouble. Okay, well, let's see how that does. All right. Space to get in there. But to me, there's no need for speed. to have this one done quite a long time ago. Sorry about the camera view, it's just hard to talk. Hold the wrench. There we go. It's actually loose already. how we do that. That's gone. God, that's a heavy bracket. Now what? Uh, it looks to me like the shielding will have to be removed before any attempt is made. I can see the bottom bracket. I cannot see the top bracket. Definitely the shield is in the way. Nope. Not for long though. Looks like somebody attempted to remove it before. It's got coolant in my eye there. Uh, so that will make things easier than I expected. At least I'll be able to access the bottom. Okay, so that looks like a little number 12 or number 10 right there. And the rest of them are already loose. Good. Good, good. Okay, I have no idea if you guys can see or not, but that's the best that I can do. Oops. Oh boy. Still short. 12 long. Oh. Fortunate that somebody already took it off. The other one. This might not. not Ah, oh, no, it's very tight. Get the torch. <laughs> I have no idea if you guys can see that, but I'm right now trying to heat up this bowl. that freaking hurt broke off <laughs> Ow. Well, I think I'll let that cool off first so, of course, right, everyone 
we're at the manifold on the back and I can see two, pardon me, two, three, four, almost five of the bolts, but I can't see the ones on the top. That'll make it problematic. That is a tight fit, man. The way Mitsubishi designed this, man, is limited room on the back. I hate that. Yeah. So anyways, I think I'll close the video out here. Um, the next move will be to remove the axle on the bottom on the driver's side uh, in order to make room enough for me to get in with my wrenches. Um, up through the back by the firewall to remove the rear exhaust manifold. Um, <clears throat> so we'll take care of that in the next video. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. Uh, please comment any questions. Uh, I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much.